Hello, and welcome to another edition of the podcast. Hello, how are you today? I'm your host, Mitch Corbett, and welcome to another uh, episode. I've said another twice. Uh, with this week, we have uh, artist Olivia Baker Byers. Uh, she's a fantastic artist outside of uh, Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. She uh, was on a show I worked on uh, called The Art Exchange, and I had to have her on the podcast because, like, she's got talent, she's young, the world is her oyster, and I wanted to kind of break that down uh, in this episode, and we did, and it was one of my favorite conversations. She's a wonderful human being, uh, a wonderful artist, and I want you guys to get to this wonderful conversation, so let's get to the conversation with Olivia Barker Byers. And this is the start of the podcast. Hello, how are you today, guys? I'm here with Olivia Barker Byers. <laughs> Who's an artist based out of Ontario, Canada? <laughs> You're allowed to drink during the podcast, it's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're already half in the bag over on this side, so it's all good. <laughs> so, Olivia, uh, I want to have you on podcast because, um, I think you're a fantastic artist and you're you're full of youth and I, I loved your personality when we had you on the episode of the Art Exchange, uh, which is exclusive to blank and blank because I'm not going to try and get myself in trouble. Um, <laughs> but I love the way that you uh, you did your art because it, it was full color. Uh, you, you used your imagination and everything. So uh, I know we discussed it on the show that we had, um, but like how did you fall in love with like painting and being an artist like because that's a hard route to go down so luckily or unluckily like whichever way you want to look at it my parents are pretty much like i'll say hippies like they were very much like supportive of arts and listening to music and were your parents like ned flanders from simpsons or what was that uh, have you ever watched Simpsons, like Ned Flanders' parents? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what they are. <laughs> Goddamn <Yeah>. beatniks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they definitely are a couple of beatniks. So they... <laughs> but, like, they they were very like I'll say they were like the perfect storm like my parents are separated but like the things that they did have in common were definitely like art um love for creation uh just anything in the realm of creativity basically so growing up every night it was like drawing painting listening to music stuff like that like my mom always had craft supplies it was just a very like artsy household and even my friend my best friend growing up his family was very artsy too so even if I left the house and went over there I was still surrounded by art so it was like everywhere I went it was influence after influence and being such a at such an age of development like where you it's very formative years around six seven that kind of time that sort of solidified like mm, yeah you're gonna do art for the rest of your life <laughs> well you know so that's interesting because like you know when you grow up in that environment a lot of the uh, childhood uh, mentality is to go against the grain go against what they're uh, they're being taught so like did you have any resistance to the idea of doing art or anything like that I I didn't really have resistance to art but growing up I won't say I was like, I recognized that I was a little better than average in art growing up. I would never really want to call myself an artist because I hadn't like done what I qualified as like making it yet, which was like, I guess I didn't feel like an artist at the time. I now feel like an artist. I don't think I was ready to be an artist. But growing up, I was always like praised for how good I was at art. And I feel like that was almost counteractive because it put so much pressure on me at such a young age to be to keep getting better at art and to keep following it. So I almost fell out of love with art. And then um, I've just recently in the past like year or so gotten back into really wanting to push it as a career. 
instead of just do it as a hobby. Now, this might be a sound as a weird question, but like, did the pandemic help in that aspect where you fell in love with it because you had, like, you you had this full free time sort of thing? Um, the pandemic, um, the pandemic was weird because I have. I haven't been completely diagnosed with it yet, but I talked to a psychologist and it's like, I probably am in the realm of having like borderline personality disorder. So it's just a mood disorder where mm -hmm. like happy and sad's are bad, like, or like really good or really bad, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, which my mother has it as well. So it also sort of falls yeah, in line. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. But so dealing with that, like, it's it's one of those mental illnesses that you sort of prefer your, oh my gosh. Chester, don't get out of your beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go get my cat, but I don't know where she is. That's okay. He wants to say hi. Oh my God. Oh, Anyways, well. Go on, this is Chester Roo. Go on, have your conversation. <laughs> um, basically, it's one of those, like, obviously I love the people I love but I also love my own personal time. So the quarantine was like kind of, I don't want to say great, but like, I was like, yeah, free time. But do, it does seem like a lot of people fucking, uh, fucking like, kind of like found themselves like with that, with that space and with that anonymity to like kind of like chase their passions through art. Like it, it, it seemed like as much a, as detrimental as it seemed for a lot of people and majority of people, there are those outliers that it seemed to really benefit. I feel like it really forced people. It's almost like, like not to get too extreme because people can still go out for walks and experience nature and stuff like that. Like, but it was almost like being put in solitary confinement in the sense of like, you're supposed to stay away from other people. You're supposed to, you know, stay in your home, not touch anything. Don't do anything. It was very like, like, everything was super quiet all you had time to do was think so dangerous thing to do <laughs> when you're forced to think and you're not doing anything else other than being surrounded by yourself you can only think about yourself Did like no outside influence or anything sort of makes you evaluate what you're doing solely like what you're doing so did your concept of art change when you had that time to think because like i feel like you kind of were you like you mentioned how like your mom and dad would kind of push you in some sort of art form, and I'm wondering if that changed while you're in the pandemic, where you had to kind of think for yourself and like maybe you kind of grew as an artist through that process. I definitely sort of decided during the pandemic that it was like I'm just gonna make the kind of stuff that comes into my head. I'm not gonna worry about how people um receive it or how people react to it I'm not really going to care if it if I sell one or a hundred like I'm literally just going to put the paint on the canvas and do what I feel like whether or not that was because of the quarantine making me reevaluate myself as an artist or not I can't really be sure because I I feel like I was sort of on this track already but I definitely think the quarantine maybe sped it up a little bit like yeah. it, it definitely gave me the time that I needed and just couldn't get otherwise. And now you're like, you're what in your twenties, right? I am twenty four. I turned twenty five June. 20th. Right. So like you got like, you have you have experience as an artist, but like, as an artist, I imagine a lot of art experience comes through life's tragedies and tribulations to kind of get to that mode of where like so like uh from a standpoint of being a child of uh, separate parents or divorced parents or like i mean how has that molded your artistic nature at all or anything or um well it definitely and like <laughs> i'll say this but i do want anybody watching and the only reason i'm asking is that i've been drinking so <laughs> there's no filter i'm just an fyi <laughs> Okay, yeah, I was gonna say, like, I love my parents dearly, but I yeah, will no, not. I mean, no, but like, like, you know, like, everyone has their issues with their parents, and like, everyone's not always able to admit the issues that they have with their parents, but like, sometimes yeah. it help benefit the creative aspect of what you're going through, sort of thing. Yeah, so 
it was definitely it was not a nuclear family growing up like it was not necessarily like and I I also know my parents don't know how to use the internet so they're probably not going to see any of this so (laughs) so fuck them Olivia loves you guys don't worry she loves you both (laughs) I'm the one being the asshole here no no we're both assholes (laughs) I mean Um, (laughs) we're both dicks yes (laughs) yes <laughs> bring it back to the show we're gonna do later anyways go on <laughs> yeah no so basically it's just it's one of those things where it's always sort of helped me have a different world view and I feel like in art I don't want to say having uh an off view of things or a different view of things is necessary but it definitely helps to at least make some of your stuff more intriguing. Like, I absolutely love landscape pieces. I just did one and it's like a realistic one. Like there's nothing, there's nothing otherworldly about it. It's still beautiful, but I wouldn't necessarily consider it my style of art because I'm more in the realm of like, I grew up being very inspired by like people like Salvador Dali and stuff like that. Like there's more, um, there's more room for added influence, I guess. Mm -hmm. I can only take, I can only take a shoreline or a line of trees so far while keeping it within the realm of reality. So let me ask you about this then. Cause like you, you, you seem to kind of have your idea of what your style is. And we did the art exchange where like it was a completely different style of like doing something in terms of art right yeah like do you like to challenge yourself or do you like because I, I, what i found through doing the show is that i i feel like a lot of people are like like uh, that challenge of like having to do something on the spot an object really hindered but also like opened up their ideas of what creativity could be so I was wondering if like like do you like that challenge of like trying to do new stuff I do really it's not even necessarily I don't really consider it a challenge I more so consider it like a learning opportunity excuse me or like a growth okay we've been both drinking I I I I had to cover one up earlier it's like cheers (laughs) um I I more so think like like when we were painting together I wasn't like oh my god I hope mine's better than hers I was like I can't wait to see what she does because she's like going at that canvas over there but I can't take the time to stop and look at hers so I gotta keep throwing paint at mine so it was more so like an exciting fun experiment more but than I mean challenge. do you like that challenge though or like because I find like with the show that we did I find that a lot of artists struggle with the challenge. Like I feel like, and I hate to say it, because like I, as a comedian, like I'm always trying to challenge myself with like new jokes, new material, new boundaries to push, that sort of thing. But with certain artists, I have found that they don't really like the challenge of trying to do something different, if that makes sense. And I'm wondering like why that's a thing. Because as an artist, I feel like the challenge would be to do new things like i'm very much a star trek fan like i want to i want to explore new universes and space planets that sort of thing it's a it's i feel like it's a fear of failure because it's like i used to be where like i wouldn't want to even do a rough sketch of something because i was so scared of it looking bad because after people telling me i do such good work it's like how could something come out bad but then you sort of go past that and realize there's a you used to be really bad at everything you do (laughs) you know like you used to not be able to walk and now you can walk everywhere you go like you have to start doing bad to learn to do good you know like you have to start somewhere so I think people just need to sort of get past the fear of failure or a fear of well, so I, let me let me expound upon that idea. Like, I don't think it's possible to fail in art, right? Art is one of those things that's ever growing. Like, 
It's oh, it, I, I, if, yeah, if someone I says totally that you're agree. failing at art, that means they're a dick or an asshole. Like art is so subjective. Like there's no failures. Like if I, I, I mean, I, I get failure when I perform comedy, when a joke fails, but like as an artist is like, I mean, who's to say what's good or bad. And I hate when people judge art. It's, it's such a subjective thing. And like, I don't think there's mm -hmm. failure that can be happened. I should have tagged you in this because this was the, luckily I'm at the stage in my life where I really do not care what other people think of me and rock that shit because fucking it goes it, it takes you a long way to be honest like obviously I'm gonna want to like make sure I have basic hygiene and I'm not gonna like you know like I'm gonna take care of crap like that yeah please take a shower gonna... once in a while that'd be great yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> but I'm not gonna like get all worried or get my panties in a bunch when somebody comments on something like my art and says that it sucks like because people not everybody's gonna like your stuff like for instance I should have tagged you in this I posted two pictures of Bic lighter and they were sort of in a graffiti-esque style just quickly not not necessarily quickly done but in in a bold brush style so it looked quickly done and somebody and i posted it on marketplace because why not and oh, somebody goes <laughs> <laughs> and somebody goes uh this looks like a ninth grader did it and at first i was gonna like let it go unseen but then I was like, no. So I said, thank you for your feedback. But I don't give a fuck what you think. <laughs> oh, okay, good. And that's why I wanted yeah. him to know. I, I just really wanted him to know that, like, nobody asked. And then that brought in other people to comment on it about how it should have been better. And then there's artists in the community coming and defending my art and then like even more people coming and attacking those artists and then it... and I'm just sitting there like Why? it's frustrating right it's super frustrating it was only frustrating because I'm like okay I get it maybe somebody did but we don't need to all get frustrated it's a couple of Bic lighters like let's just so like what do you this. what do you think is that like um like that 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 nerve ending in the brain of someone that says like oh i should comment negatively on this even though i don't participate in this art form like i because i truly do not understand it i okay well <laughs> i had uh i was watching all this happen in the comment section and i'm not really taking any problem with it and then i like mentioned it to my boyfriend who by the way, when we did the art show, I said that one guy who I was talking to. Yeah. yeah. No, forget him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you found a new lover. Oh, fantastic. I have. And he's absolutely fantastic. But the other thing you say was so he was so pretty. He was pretty. I will give him that. He was pretty on the outside. <laughs> Yeah, we filmed that a few months ago, but anyways, go. <laughs> <laughs> so things change, guys. Uh, life, night, life progresses as we go. Yeah, life progresses, and it does get better. Um, but so I'm watching all this go, and I'm whatever about it. And I mentioned what's going on to my boyfriend. So he immediately, like, he goes and looks. And he's like, you know what these people are? These are people who look at the price and look at the work and are upset that they can't do that and make money off of it. Like they're just, essentially they're jealous. And part of me does believe that, but then the other part of me also believes that there's some people who just don't view art the same way artists do. There's just some people who aren't programmed to understand that people have different styles like not everything is going to be a picture perfect landscape or a typical like 
portrait. Like, art's different for everybody. It's like you said, it can't be bad, but it can definitely be subject to opinion. <laughs> like, now let me ask this though, because I've also met artists who think that their 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 shit doesn't stink, sort of thing. Mm. Where like they think their shit is the the be all end all, and they don't respond to abject cr criticism, right? And like how so? How do you balance that nature of your artistic journey? Journey. What I take it as is not just it's not like a. It's not a feeling of like, oh, any publicity is good publicity or any reaction is a good reaction, but art should make you feel something most of the time. Like if you're should making- it make you feel anger though? Because sometimes I'm like, depending on the art, I'm like, seriously, what are we doing? Sometimes, <laughs> but I, I think even so, like art, I feel like if art goes on a canvas and you can look at it and just forget about it, like, I don't know, it's not really, either you're not really like paying attention to the piece or it's not saying enough. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you this one story, right? So my wife and I are in the living new flat and this is where we're gonna get the discussion about what is art and like, how do you judge, right? And so there's art, there's art thing, I think it's called the BNL in Newfoundland. Uh, and this uh, woman submitted an art piece where like it was all audio and visual. Um, but the audio and visual was so loud and so disengaging to the audience that were coming through this museum. And when it was brought up to her, like, hey, it's a bit too loud, it's a bit too engaging. We want people to enjoy their visit through the museum. She's like, yeah. oh, they're fine. Like she wasn't taking that feedback of like, hey, maybe people would enjoy it more if it like was just toned down a bit. And to be honest, I saw the art piece and it was just her deconstructing a house. And it was just the sounds of like sledgehammers like on concrete and like just like <laughs> so like, and I understand what she was going through because I'm a visual medium person. I yeah. understand, but like like there has to be a certain level of respect between the artist and the audience, I find, when you're you're interacting with people. Oh, for sure. Like, I would never... Like, you have to definitely, I'll say, read the room when you're going to be showing something. Like, like for Art in the Park, um, I'm going to email them and send them a few pictures because some of my stuff is a little mature and risky <laughs> but like I wouldn't just set up a stall and expect everybody to be fine with what I do like I want to make sure that it's going to be inclusive for everybody like if I wanted to make an audience specific thing that showcased everything I do I would set up my own event instead of take up a, like a group thing and make it about me you know like I would so like let me ask you about that the confidence level right as and in, in terms of like you know you've been developed as this artist uh you're 24 now your parents are very supportive you've obviously had some hiccups along the way um where, where how do you is it one review is it one person commenting like where do you get your confidence because I always go back to that scene in the office where like Pam shows her art and then Michael comes in and he's like, oh, this is great, why don't buy it? You know, it's uh, such a sweet and a humble moment, but like that encourages her to keep on doing her thing. Like, is it those small moments or is it a big moments? Like, how do you, how do you keep on going when, you know, you're as an artist, like you're obviously going to go through so many hurdles. It is honestly, I will say it is honestly like the small things. Like even if I post something and somebody like likes the picture who somebody who I don't know they gain nothing from liking the picture they are just showing support like that is the cool part about because then you know that your art at least speaks to like one other person and that's the coolest feeling ever but 
um no it is also it's the small things but it's also definitely like close to home support like my boyfriend thinking I'm like he he wants to completely support me in moving my art career forward like mo some people would sort of view the art career as like a hobby he actually sees potential in it so is that is that intimidating to you at all is having someone so supportive um it takes a big sip <laughs> of her alcoholic beverage like ah let me think about this for a second here <laughs> it would be if he was like more um <laughs> Like, you know, when on that, uh, have you ever like seen anything like toddlers and tiaras when the moms are like supportive, but they're just like living their dream through their daughter? Uh, Olivia, I have a life. So, no, I've not seen okay. it. I've heard well, of them. Not every and they horrify me. Does. They horrify me to the end. <laughs> but so there's these moms and they show support by like yelling at I know, I, I know what it is. Yeah. We don't need to tell people. We don't need to. <laughs> Oh, you know, advertise how things. horrible these people are <laughs> so to, as a podcast we want to keep it happy and flowing <laughs> there's these shit moms <laughs> yeah shit moms they are shit moms let's agree with that um, mom. so these shit moms encourage their kids to fucking dress like whores um <laughs> whores whores <laughs> but yeah no he's supportive in like the you know, do it at your, like, how you ever feel comfortable doing it, or at your own pace, or just, just I'll be here for moral support, like, keep going, babe. <laughs> yeah, but do you, do you have, a, like, do you have any, like, he's supportive, your parents are supportive, but then you get that one, like, comment that's, like, for some reason or another fucking hits you, and you're like, yeah, son of a bitch, <laughs> and, like, it kind of, like, takes you back, right? But like, like, how do you overcome that thing? That um, I is, it, is it, it support or is it just like knowing that you're a good artist? I don't necessarily know that I'm a good artist, but I, I overcome it by like realizing that not everything is life or death. Like that is kind of the thing that I say to myself about everything. Like, like I used to get super uh, nervous about going to high school in the morning, like anxiety through the roof, just could not handle it. Um, but because I used to think it was like the end of the world if I would like miss a class or if I would get like just poor grades or something like that. But now I'm at a stage in my life where it's like, tomorrow's another day. Like, it's not, it's not the end. Like, you're going to be okay. Settle down. So, like, oh, some guy out of 7 billion people in the world doesn't like my stuff. Have you, have you found that you've developed a kind of like a fuck you attitude by any chance? Yeah. Yeah. How, uh, how great is that feeling? It's really good. It's very, like, <laughs> liberating. <laughs> Like, I know I say like a lot, but I don't care. Um, I'll, 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 I know, I'll tell you a story. So like, I started this podcast probably in May, I think it was. And I've been pointing out, and some guy commented on, my, on an episode of it, and he's like, you fat fuck, you should quit. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing a good job. That means I'm succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, the, I, I feel like there is a, there is a, uh, uh, a measurable talent level where, like, when people t shit on you and say hey you shouldn't do that it's like that's like oh that means I should keep on going if they don't like yeah. it that means you're succeeding in my opinion in my opinion yes too in the sense of like what you're doing should be getting a reaction it shouldn't be you know like you were definitely causing a stir in someone's life Good. Like I doubt, Problem. I doubt they watched the video and decided to go. Oh, you know what? I loved the video, but I'm gonna attack him personally. No, they watched the video, saw something they didn't like, 
didn't want to explain it, so they went after your reporter. How dare you have a female on your guest on your podcast, blah, blah, blah. I was like, fuck off, bro. Okay, yeah. <laughs> One of those people. Okay. So let me ask you about that though. Cause like, I mean, like, so I'm part of the comedy community, uh, wrestling community, and you're part of the artistic community. Um, how supportive is the artistic community in Sarnia, London, that like that region in Canada? Cause I mean, when you, we had you on the guest on the show, like you and Kristen had such a great interaction between each other. It was fantastic to see. But is it always like that, or are there are, are there a, a, a buddy of the skulls when it comes to like the art community? As far as I'm concerned, like there there's gonna be budding heads in any uh, career that you do, any realm, any club, any whatever that you do. But like, so sorry, I'm gonna sorry, I'm sure, but like, how does that exist in art? Because I feel like art is one of the most supportive, like ventures you can go down i don't understand how people can say oh i don't like 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 (laughs) how how (laughs) i feel like some people probably take praise like support a little too far and i feel like they might let it go to their head a little bit and they might see their art as the art and if it's not coming from them that it's not you know up to par with them so because I, I've met a lot of people, a lot of artists who could have that attitude, in my opinion. Like, I view their art as, like, leagues better than mine. Um, but they don't. But I could definitely see, with the amount of support that they get constantly, I could see where that opinion would come from. If somebody were to let that get to them, I could see where someone would get out of control and view their art as, like, the shit that doesn't stink so when when you see someone else's art like are you are you more aligned along the line of like i want to gas this person up instead of gaslight them like are you trying to encourage them to like pursue their art like like hey this is very good because like i i with comedy like i am always i, I i'm constantly like just because my life experience i i'm always trying to fucking like hey this is good mm-hmm can I give you a suggestion on this thing? Like, you know, as and that, I'm not even a great comedian. I'm just fucking trying to help everyone out sort of thing. No, and that's exactly the way I feel because I still personally don't view myself as like an artist. Like I'm like a, I paint things and I'm okay. I'm a bit better than average. Like I'm not, but whenever I see, even if it's like, like whatever I see, if I like it, I'm gonna like, support it i'm gonna share it i'm gonna thumbs up it i'm gonna like whatever i gotta do um and i'm also someone who doesn't really like to give opinions unless they're asked for not only because is it like i'm gonna ask um (laughs) but like that's why I always I'm, ask you, hey, can I, you can I give you an idea for your joke? Can I, 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 I'm always like of the, hey, do you mind? I, I thought of a thing f- like in comedy specifically. I'm like, do you mind if I ask you, can I give you some advice? on? Can I give you like, I feel like this joke would be emphasized by this. Like I'm always asking first, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. I, I, I always feel like an idiot doing it. But at the same time, like I want to help them. So I don't feel like yeah. an idiot. And like, I would love that too. Cause sometimes I see stuff and I'm like, I remember when I was just starting to draw and I was making these same mistakes. Cause like I follow, like I have my personal Instagram and then I have my art Instagram. So I follow a lot of like, um, like developed artists. And then I also follow a lot of like just early on artists who are just starting to get um, like popularity and whatever. And I see some things that I used to do when I was a young artist that I definitely don't do now. And it's like, it would be nice to comment, but it's one of those things where it's like, they'll learn in time. And unless it's like, like I've never been compelled to give another artist my, my opinion without asking. Yeah. Like I will always say, 
something like, can I like interpret, can I tell you how this comes across to me or whatever like that. I won't say this is what it's supposed to be like and this is what the colors are supposed to be and you know this is how you're supposed to draw this line and like no fuck that art do, can they, be art. do, do those interactions happen often where like artists are like telling you how what to do and how to do it sort of thing no i don't i've never been told how to do something um unless like we count high school art class <laughs> like <laughs> but from like other artists no, I've never been, I've never been told. It's only been people who are definitely not in the art community who are judgmental about art. How, like, <laughs> that's such a weird thing. Like, I mean, it's, it's like, so like, I personally feel like I can comment on some art because my wrestling background and my comedy background, my grandfather and mother were huge in the art and everything. But at the same time, I don't know shit. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anything. So like, what is the artistic community like? Because I, I, I've been around a few uh, events where like, it just seems like it's all love, it's all peace. And it seems like such a cool environment to be a part of. Like, kind of give me an idea of like, what the artistic community in uh, Sarnia or London or Hamilton or Toronto, because like, you're, you're, you're trying to get your outward you're trying to get your art out there and about uh, a boot, sorry. Uh, <laughs> like, like, can I give an idea of what the art community is like from your experience? I feel like the art community here, like in Sarnia specifically, especially is very, um, like everyone is welcome. It's very, uh, all walks of life. Are accepted like you can start you could be like 65 and decide you want to start painting and the art community would be like yeah you can start it go for it like come on now um but it's just it's great here because of the support that you do get from the art community but it's such a small city in general it's hard to like really branch out so being where I'm at right now like Sarnia is kind of perfect because it's a small community for me to make my name in the hard part will be um expanding past Sarnia eventually and so like my let's name. like because we talked about on the show um the art exchange hashtag the art exchange uh <laughs> but like you did mention how you wanted to kind of travel outside of the uh norms of Sarnia into like a city like Hamilton, which I suggested, uh, or yeah. Toronto, or sort of thing. Like, have you talked to any fellow artists on how to kind of like get the next step in ladder to get to that level, or are you kind of just like? Um, I've been like keeping something like Toronto, or uh, it doesn't even necessarily have to be in Canada. Like, I would love to get my name known in Canada first because I just I love Canada but you know like I could also see about starting in the states so it because we are at the border city like there's just there's so many good things about being in Sarnia like I could expand across the bridge possibly I could um you know Michigan whatever but no, as far as asking other people where to go and how to start and what to do, I've sort of held back on that until I make my name in Sarnia. I don't oh, want to. You know what? Go... I'm going to tell you, stop being stupid and fucking ask people advice. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Olivia. You got the talent. If I can go for it, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard. <laughs> it's this, like... it's this. It all it takes is this a Zoom conversation like, hey, how do I do this I thing? <laughs> Like honestly, no. I, I I I like during that episode, I was like, oh, like, and the way that you drew those two pigs and like the color scheme, like I was like, oh, it's fucking this chick has fucking some real talent. Like you're fucking really good. You have a personality that is engaging. You could fucking do so many different things with it. And I've only had one other podcast where I'm like just encouraging people to say start. But like you have this kind of like fluidity with the art and your personality that you could be so successful if you just 
I don't know if it's like politicking, but like talking to the right people and like kind of like making those connections sort of thing. So like, are you, shy, are, you shy, are you shy about making connections? Is that your? Um, it's not, it's necessarily, it's just knowing who to talk to. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> like, I have no idea what to do. Like, I am perfectly fine making phone calls. I can do that. I can do whatever. But it's just knowing who to call, what what numbers to punch in. Like, I, that's why I want to sort of get a fan base first. So mm-hmm. before I go to someone, I can be like, look at all these people who already love me. Like, come on now. So. So in my retrospect of like just knowing, and I don't know shit about social media or anything. Um, I just know that people kind of make things and just post them and if they hit, they hit. And I mean, I, I sent you that, uh, um, did I send you the Kevin Smith stuff? You did and I looked at it, but it looked like it's mainly for like uh, film and stuff like that. No, but he's looking for artists too, like for like a gallery. Okay, okay, I will send yeah. you my stuff then. So right. I looked so into like, it and I was like, like, I think this is for like cinematography. And stuff. Oh no, because he, because uh, he is a film. Kevin Smith does Clerks. Oh, that's fun stuff. He's a film director, but he's oh, done. Okay. He's doing this festival where it shows like the like just artists in general, and like. I kind of feel like for someone like you and for someone like me, like as a comedian, I'm more looking at like people like Andrew Schultz, Josh Wolf, like guys who are established who just release stuff on YouTube for free and they yeah. go following that way. And I feel like with your artists, artistry, I'm stumbling over, I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> over your, over your, with your background in artists, like you just kind of just, every festival every opportunity like here's my art fucking take it do what you want with yeah. it but then it builds that names or things so like whether it be a ken smith film festival where they show a gallery of art or where are the fucking toronto or hamilton you know it's like hey i'm gonna submit this and then you take it and then like that builds your name up right yeah and then if you get in that festival right that as a credit on your account and those credits build up and you fucking build that following that way in my opinion. And that's my unsolicited yeah. advice to you as I'm drinking. No, and it, it is. Uh, like Spartan Press Pills from Fork River. <laughs> I do want to do the like festival scene and have like a uh, tent somewhere like at every single event. Like I want to be actively doing selling as well. Like I, I don't want to just call people and wait for the opportunity. Like I want to be pushing myself yeah you're you're so young that you have the opportunity to just fucking go for it too i mean you don't yeah, have no exactly. boundaries right? i mean like so um like that's the beautiful part about sort of like everything opening back up again like music festivals are coming back um art shows and stuff are coming back um just so many more opportunities are coming back and i've finally like established kind of who i am as an artist so i think like this year and forward it's going to be a whole new game. For Dude, my apply, person. apply. If, if there's, if you, like, I would join every Toronto, Hamilton, fucking Port Huron, Michigan art Facebook thing. And just like, if they're having an art show, submit some shit and fucking just yeah. Adventure. yeah. Well, that's, and that's basically. And they have more stories to tell in this podcast. So you, there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna be back. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be back. Yeah. So like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. and then you'll have like a nice hat on with like a long cigarette out your fucking. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> like, well, Mitch, since my arts hits well, I have <laughs> a fur coat. And a new man. He's a lawyer and a professional bodybuilder too. If I, uh, <laughs> he wrecks my world some days. It's uh, <laughs> sometimes we make art in the bedroom. <laughs> no seriously though um the next piece is actually that i'm gonna do is actually sort of related to my my boyfriend because he's he, he's really into cars and stuff like that so i'm gonna do two large pieces one is gonna be a car one's gonna be a motorcycle and they're and gonna be sold dick. yeah um and they're not going to be all like funky and for the show for the show only for the show oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna have your um, boyfriend appear like hey that's mine what, you, <laughs> <laughs> what is this <laughs> surprise surprise <laughs> <laughs> 
Can you imagine? Yeah. It's like, wait, that's my... <laughs> that would be brilliant. We should do that. <laughs> oh yeah. How long has been good for? Hilarious. What was that? How long has been good for? Uh so we got together in like the last half of December. All right, so... that's too soon. We only wait six months till he's okay with that sort of thing. Okay, okay. All right. I, he's, pretty cool. September, he's yeah. pretty cool. I don't know, man. I, I mean, I'm telling for you from a guy's standpoint, it's like you want to wait six months. Yeah, like kind of like get on camera. All right, okay. I will take I will take that advice. Okay. Yeah. Six months to a year, you like you know it's for a real thing. Three months yeah. you don't yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so like I mean, is that is that like something that you want to do from an artistic standpoint? Uh like is like it well, let me ask this. Is is it nerve wracking to just like like, how do you choose what you want to do? How do you choose what you want to submit? It's like, or are you ready to just be like, fuck it. Here's everything. Fucking here's all my art. And there's hope so many hits. I, the way I sort of pick what I want to put out there is, would I be okay with somebody seeing this and associating me with it? You know, like if I'm not 100% satisfied with what I wanted to do, then I just will not like I, I won't shy away from it if somebody wants to see all my crap art I'll show it to them because I keep it because I sometimes go back to it for old ideas and work on them but I'm not going to showcase it as what defines me because if it's like if it's not if I'm not going to hang it on my wall I would not expect someone else to hang it on their wall so that's a weird thing for an artist to say because I feel like I feel like every piece you make is made for someone. You just don't know who it's for, right? So, like, I feel like my idea would, if I was an artist, like, be like, I'm going to blast this shit out and someone's going to like it. <laughs> and I could do that, but I just wouldn't feel right selling a piece to someone that I'm not 100% happy with, you know? Like, That's I feel weird. like I'm ripping don't them off. Don't do that. Fucking just fuck it, man. <laughs> just tell them, yeah, man. Just tell them just shit. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, if someone's gonna buy it, that means they're likely to like it. Just put it out there. Like we live in a we live in an age where like fucking TikTok and Instagram is a thing where people fucking put shit out every single fucking day, and not everyone likes it. But like you know what? There's a good portion of people that do like it. So you gotta fucking get on the trend of like, I'm gonna give people my art regardless of what they like or not, and someone's gonna find it because I've seen you draw, I've seen you paint, I know you're good, I know you have the talent. And someone, and I'm a fucking jabroni. I don't know shit from. <laughs> <laughs> and if I say it's good, though, someone else is gonna find it good. So fucking just do it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. That is a good point. I didn't think about the. Yeah. Yeah. Think about me. Every time you're gonna release the painting, like, oh, if this fucking idiot likes it, then someone else will. Boy, is he a we sports a fan with Colorado and Bill? Like, what are those nice. real books? <laughs> real books? Come on, they're biographies. They gotta be. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying to you right now? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I do. I get it. I get it. Like you really, I, in my opinion, like from a comedic comedic standpoint, you, you have like this, especially in this day and age. Like, if you want to be successful, you really have to like. If you believe in your art, which I do in my comedy, which you do in your art, just fucking put it out there and fucking, yeah. if the wind blows the right way, fucking fantastic. If it doesn't, well, fucking that wind smells is bad. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's more often or not, like if you have the confidence to fucking believe in yourself and chase that dream, you're gonna fucking find success. Yeah, no, it, it is, it is definitely, uh... Art is not a career for those easily persuaded. Because if you are affected by others' opinions heavily, like same as comedy, you cannot be worried about who you might offend. The people you're supposed to be worrying about are the people you want to make laugh. You know, you can't be... You can't be scared of saying things. Same way you can't be scared of painting things yeah so like as long and 
comedy itself is an art form because you have to know what to say, when to say, where to say it, when to pause. And that pause. takes rehearsal and practice and like find that punchline too. I mean, it's-, it's and The same way I keep my rough sketches, I'm sure there's plenty of comedians who keep their old stuff, watch it, learn no, from it. No, they don't, they don't. They hide no? it and they bury it because they don't want to see the other terror. That's, that's the, I think the difference is that like a lot of comedians, uh will they just forget it ever happened <laughs> yeah like they'll try a bad they'll try a joke like i know i've tried four or five jokes where like it's just fucking dead on arrival <laughs> it, it, it just fucking doesn't work at all <laughs> yeah. but like with an artist but with a painting or with a, a sketch that there is more potential in that because like at the same time though as a comedian in a small comedy community, if you're just doing those jokes in front of just comedians, like it's a hard parameter to. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Like I know for a fact that I cannot talk about racism like that. <laughs> I've tried, it doesn't work. It just fucking doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the only joke that I have ever works at, worked out well for me is that like, is like when I talk about white people and how racism is stupid. Yeah. Like, I would tell you this one and maybe we'll get a laugh you, but um. It's like what happened to a ra- what happens to a racist if they get a tan? Like, do they just wake up in the morning like do a Macaulay coffee? Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's what kills me. Like, nobody, like everybody, dies so hard to get that like dark fucking tan. And then usually the people who want to get that dark fucking tan are like I. I've met very racist tan white people, and I'm like, <laughs> are you blind? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why that joke works so well. Like, uh, another one is like, how can a racist be a fan, a sports fan? <laughs> <laughs> See, you're not a comedian. You laugh at that. That's funny. When I tell that joke in front of comedians, they're like, motherfuckers <laughs> yeah it's because they're upset they didn't think of it whatever yeah no it's, and it's um, and, and that's why i want to have because like our art forms are so different but they're so similar in the sense that like i know that you've probably had artist quote unquote artists give you feedback and it was like feedback to hold you back sort of thing so i was wondering if you ever yeah. experienced anything like that Um, honestly, the only time I felt held back was when I was in high school, and it was because the teacher, I don't know, she was super hung up on, like, realism and stuff like that, like, just, she, it was very restrictive, like, you weren't really allowed to think outside the box if it wasn't in the curriculum. But it's art, that's such a weird concept to me, is that it's art and that you had to do one specific thing. Yeah, like, we had to, um, like, the only time there was really, like, an open time for you to be a true artist was, like, when you were sketching at home, because what they did was they would give you a sketchbook that by the end of the year you had to fill up, and, like, each time, like, each page would be marked, basically, like, if you had an empty page, it would be no mark kind of thing, so you had to do that um which at the time I hated rough copies so that was a really hard thing for me to do I usually just wanted to do one thing and be done with the piece um but that was the only like really open part of the art class was when you got to just take your sketchbook home and draw whatever you wanted does does it bug you that that sort of person is in charge of like growing young adult minds in terms of art Cause it would bug me it bugs me to a degree but i also know like like it's not like i'm just happy they got someone who was good at art like i saw one of her personal pieces that she did like because i stayed i took her art class all high school i had her as the art teacher for all of high school And I got to learn from grade nine to grade 12 that it wasn't her blocking me. It was the curriculum that she was forced to teach that was blocking me. Because her art was actually incredible. Like she did this farm scene 
and it was uh like a realistic it had like two goats under a tree or whatever like that in a barn in the road the distance but it was almost it almost had like a 3d neon effect and it was so like simple but out of this world I was like that's sick is that yours (laughs) and she's like yeah it's mine I'm like hell yeah so like she she was capable of doing some cool shit but the stuff she was forced to teach because that's her job it was like this is how you paint a cloud like have you you ever have you ever been able to have a conversation with her outside of that that medium of school curriculum um I sort of did um basically because what I did was I took her art class like during the mandatory art courses I took it as my extracurricular like where you could pick whatever course you wanted to take I took another art course and then for my volunteer hours I also stayed there during lunches to help clean up the art room and do other art stuff what was the what was the experience like I mean from from kind of like thinking she's kind of like a not supportive person then like realizing that like that's got to be kind of a uplifting experience and like did you guys get to have like any real interactions in terms of like showing it, your art to her it was really cool um when I started like growing because when I was first in her art class in grade nine I was very like I won't say subdued but I didn't really like expand like show my art to a lot of people because it like I do like kind of like creepy like eyeballs and stuff like that and like I still paint headless women and like whatever so in grade nine you're like I don't know how people are going to react to this but going through I actually did end up showing her a more personal side of my art because around grade 12 or whatever I can't remember if it was 11 or 12 but we did also ceramics and I ended up doing a, a headless woman and she thought it was super cool so I it was one of those like uplifting moments of like oh someone who's professional thinks this kind of stuff is you know okay so so like we didn't get together and have coffee on the weekends and stuff like that but she was pretty cool is there there an opportunity that you could maybe reconnect with her and like see what um if I remembered her first name I remember her last name uh miss finlayson st Clair. oh she's in the record books you can fucking reach out to her and see what happens that would be a cool conversation she was real shit she was awesome (laughs) um uh thank you so much for being on the podcast today um where can people find you uh via instagram social media that sort of fun fun stuff so i'm olivia b artistry or olivia capital b period artistry um on facebook instagram um if you want you can personal message me if you have any ideas for commissions if you see something you like and you want to buy it definitely message me i'm always open uh and i'm always looking for new and exciting challenges in the art world so if anybody has any ideas that they want to come to fruition throw it at me because i'm down to do it and my last question to you uh, before we wrap up is that like you are still new in the art game, but you have experience. Um, do you have any advice for future artists, like whether it be comedy or art or you know, drawing? Like, I, it's such a it's such a vo- spectrum of art. Uh, what would you suggest? Um, have an I don't give a fuck attitude but be respectful about it. Be respectful (laughs) about it. Be respectful to other artists, but also don't take shit. (laughs) Yeah. So there you go to the kids (laughs) out there. (laughs) Olivia, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I hope you had a good time and uh, I'll see you later, okay? Oh yeah, I had an awesome time. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with Olivia Barker Byers. She's a fantastic artist. And I fully encourage you guys to check out her artwork via her social medias or Facebook or Instagram or whatever she has going on. All of that stuff will be in the bio of this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying these episodes. I'm trying to pump them out as much as I can, but you know, 
sometimes shit doesn't work. So we're going to get to it and get back on the grind. And we're going to have another episode for you guys next week. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Mr. Corbett. And well, uh, thank you for listening to another episode of Hello, How Are You Say? Uh, and we'll see you guys down the line. Cheers.